1200 Films Podcast. All horror, all the time. Chuck Loaf here. So I found this website called Feedspot. And it had the ranking of the top 60 horror movie podcasts. And I wasn't on there. So I started, well, scrolling down these. And after I got to about 25, 30, I'm like, I'm crushing these shows. I get more views, more subscribers. But then it, as I looked a little closer, they, they judge a lot on Twitter followers and Instagram followers. What does my Twitter or Instagram or lack thereof have anything to do with quality of show? Absolutely nothing. So we'll see. I've submitted my show, and so we'll see if they rank me or if I get disqualified because I don't have 76 Twitter followers. <laughs> I don't do Twitter, and I don't do Instagram because I don't want to. Why don't you check my my criminal background? That has just as much to do with my show as my Instagram. Ah. Uh, because I can guarantee you, I'm, I'm in a soapbox right now, I'm going. I can guarantee you there's no other horror movie podcaster that watches as many horror films as I do. I just finished my 70th horror film from 2020. Hoping to get in another 15 or so by the end of the year. So when I do a best of 2020, I can say, hey, who watched more than me? So therefore, my ranking should mean something. <sighs> and then I started listening to some of these shows and, and, and most are just okay. Horror Movie Talk was really good. And of course, the Horror Movie Podcast is amazing. They're my inspiration. But um, the rest were, 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 were not, so, not so good what I looked at. But um, I didn't look at all of them, obviously. But I think I should be ranked. Anyway, so let's get going on today's show. Of course, the rating scale on the bottom, dumpster fire garbage, and then can't quite recommend, okay, if desperate, put it on your watch list, and then put it on top of the watch list. We got a lot of 2020 films today, but we're not starting with one, we're still going back to 1981 with Saturday the 14th. Of course, the joke is, if you think bad things are going to happen to you on Friday the 13th, just wait until Saturday the 14th. Critic rating, 10%, audience score 31, and that's about right. That's this film. It's got a couple chuckles. But beyond that, um, this family moves into this house, and, it's, and the kid finds this book and unleashes hell, basically. All these random weird monsters. And actually, the monsters don't look half that bad for 1981. But it's, it just spirals into silliness, and then the movie just kind of drags too long. So I would say, can't quite recommend. Even though it's from the 80s, I know. Moving on. 2020, VFW, critic rating 81%, audience score of 60 Rotten Tomatoes has this as the 28th best horror film so far of 2020. This almost made the my feature review of the show. This was this was in contention. I actually do two movies for my feature review on this show because I couldn't decide. This one was almost the third. VFW. These old these old war veterans are hanging out in a bar, and this girl who stole a bunch of money and drugs. Is hiding out, so of course all the crazy goons of the drug lord are all after this girl, and uh, so the the old men at the BFW bar decide to protect the girl instead of just throwing her back outside, which would have saved everyone a lot of hassle. But then there wouldn't have been a movie. Yeah. So then it becomes the old men in the bar versus the the drug people, and that's where this film is. A lot of interesting names in this film. Stephen Lang from Don't Breathe, the old man. Uh, Martin Cove, the the older Cobra Kai sensei. Fred Williamson, you probably recognize if you saw him, he was in MASH and a 
billion other films. And of course, George Wint, Norm from Cheers, they all appear in this film. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an amazing bloodbath battle they have. So yes, put this, definitely put this on your watch list. Check this out, VFW. This could be a top 10 movie. I don't know. Year's not over yet. Uh, there we go. Of course, 2020, Scare Me. Critic rating, 82%. Audience score of 76. Rotten Tomatoes has this as the 24th ranked best movie of 2020. I disagree. Uh, this is more of like a... You know, those dumb improv shows, whose line is it anyway, where they're up there making up stuff. That's what this is. But in a horror genre. That's all it is. Does it add some special effects and some sound effects and yada yada to make it feel kind of like a, a real film? Yes. But does it land? No. It just wasn't for me. I'm sure a lot of people will love this and this will be in a lot of lists just because it's artsy. But, um, no thanks. Can't quite recommend. Moving on. 2020. MOM. Mothers of Monsters. Critic rating 73%. Audience score of 81. This was a very random find on Amazon Prime. I just needed something to watch while I ate my tacos and... So then what's this? It's from 2020. I probably should check it out. And it was really, really good. <laughs> this woman and her son, two family household, and uh, the, 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 the son's a teenager, and he's into a lot of dark stuff. So the mother has convinced herself that he's going to be doing some far worse stuff, like school shootings and... Things like that. So she decides to set up hidden cameras everywhere. Everywhere. I think besides the toilet, everything is videotaped. And she obsessively watches in the back of her closet. So he doesn't find out, you know, because he has to do it you know, covertly. So she watches in the, the privacy of her closet all the things he's doing throughout the day as long as he's under that roof. <laughs> she's just waiting for him to say or do something that gives her a signal that yep he's gonna do something bad so she can stop him and then you start to think okay is she the crazy one or is the kid the crazy one but fascinating film um ed asner legendary actor he appears in this in a couple scenes he was really good but yeah, this film was this film was really really good. Put it on the watch list. I know, right? Twenty twenty Reap Town. There was nothing on Rotten Tomatoes. IMDb has it as a three point four out of ten. That rating is bullshit. Uh, according to me, it is. I was looking at a lot of the members, the, the reviews that, that members of IMDb had put, and most of them were really good. Like, where do they get this 3.4 bullshit? So, um, if you remember about 10, 15 years ago, a lot of the popular cell phone games, because I remember seeing a lot of kids doing, watch, playing this game, where you gotta, you have to, like, journey around a little area or wherever, and you have to avoid the guy. And if the guy catches you and looks at you in the face, then the cell phone goes crazy and you die and you lose. The, the faceless guy looks at you. Yeah, I'm sure some of you remember this game. I never played it myself specifically. But I remember seeing it was, it was a popular thing back then. And this is what this film reminds me of. This woman on work release, she just got out of prison. And then... um. Her sister did the same job before her because she was released before her and she went missing doing the same job that she got put in the same job. So she's kind of looking for her sister while she's trying to do this job. And the job is a night security guard at this abandoned railroad. Yeah, screw that. Give me any other job. And um, there's this thing on the loose. And... Um, 
You never know what's going to pop up. And when it does, it's it, it startles you. It gets you. <laughs> Just like that damn cell phone game. Reap Town, yes. It's only 77 minutes. It was it was a very random find. It was directed by some guy named Dutch Merrick. I've written down a few of the other films he's done, so I will be looking at those to see if this is just he got lucky here or if he's actually a good director that needs to be known. So yes, put that on your watch list too. God damn. 2007, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Critic rating 76%, audience score 75 I had put off watching this film for years and years and years and years, even though I had known about it. It looked like a weird comedy horror. And I felt like I should be in the mood for it before I watch it. You really don't need to. It's very good. This, uh, like a vice type underground reporting is finds the serial killer. And they're going to follow him like a documentary film crew. And this guy, Leslie Vernon, he's like level of Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, because they mention all those people. As if they're real people in this film. So they're going to follow the serial killer as he's doing his thing. And, and as he kills, <laughs> kills all these teenagers in this old barn. Uh, fascinating film. <laughs> <laughs> co-stars uh, Robert England Fred, the real Freddy Krueger pops up in this um, Scott Wilson who many of you will probably know as Herschel from Walking Dead pops up in this and Zelda Rubenstein who was the little tiny woman the little psychic medium in the Poltergeist films Carol Ann go towards the light Carol Ann yes she was in this this was her last film before she passed. But um, yes, it was surprising to see her. But yes, another one to put on the watch list. Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Now time for our two feature reviews. Let's go with the first one. 2020 Awoken. Your dad took your mom to a special facility. It's here, on this campus. I have two patients down there right now. Just like Blake. For those two people. It's this or death. Okay, first is Awoken 2020. No critic rating, audience score of 27. That blew me away. Could not believe that. But um, they're wrong. It's a great film. Um, so the, the story starts with this, uh, as you heard in the trailer, this girl who's a college student trying to figure out why her brother, she's a medical student, trying to figure out why her brother can't sleep. And apparently her father and mother went through the same thing years earlier. And then the professor says, yeah, there's this hidden thing we have underground here that helps desperate cases of people that are unable to sleep because they're on the verge of death. So they're kind of like an experimental thing. Instead of just sending them home to die, they're trying to actually cure them before they, you know. I can't imagine that death being sleep deprived to death. Wow. But um, so the, the girl takes her brother down there who hasn't slept in two weeks at this time. And apparently there's a lot more than just not being able to sleep. Apparently there's a, a demonic presence that's jumping in and out of people that's causing this problem. And of course, uh, little Miss Investigator, the, the, the female college student, she kind of figures that out. and So she not only has to <laughs> fix these sleep-deprived people, including her brother, she has to fight off this demon. But a fascinating little film. I put it on top of the watch list. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a random viewing in the middle of the night. And I was completely captivated. So yeah, top of the watch list. And the other feature film review we're doing is from 2020, Uncle Peckerhead. Six 
shows seven days. And what do you guys need a band for? So that our band can go on tour. I can drive y'all. Every touring band needs a road, don't they? Sorry, I didn't get your name. My name's Peckerhead. That is not your name. It's tour time. Uncle Peckerhead from 2020, a critic rating of 100%. No audience score for some reason. But, um, yes, this is ranked number three on Rotten Tomatoes' best horror films of 2020. Actually, it's in a three way tie for first. But, um, and they just have this as the third one. But, um, yes, so it's, it's, it's amazing. I, I, whew. So this struggling punk band needs to get it because their, their car just repoed the day they want to go on tour. So they're desperate. So they find this homeless man living out of this van and he agrees to drive them around as long as, you know, they pay for gas and feed them and such. So they make an agreement and they start touring. And this guy's name is, as you heard in the trailer, his name Peckerhead. Because that's what his daddy called him. <laughs> and then we learn Peckerhead has a bit of a secret. But um, as you'll as you'll have to have to watch the film to find out. Oh boy, as far as horror comedy, this is top level. As far as anything, it's top level. This is uh <laughs> has enough twists and turns to keep it interesting. And uh, Uncle Peckerhead is a fascinating character in a human being. So I definitely would say put this. On the very top, top of your watch list. This has got to be top five on the year for me. I don't... Whew. It'll be fascinating to review all these films at the end of the year and have to rank all these films. And pick one as the best. This one will be in contention. Uncle Peckerhead. Amazing. On the next show, uh, we have uh, seven of the eight films covered will be from 2020. Uh, one of the films is called Boo! Exclamation point. Not the Medea Boo movie. It's just a regular movie called Boo! Exclamation point. Uh, then one called The Dinner Party. Uh, animated one to, uh, called To Your Last Death. And then one called Amulet, which Rotten Tomatoes has ranked as the 37th best horror film. The one called Don't Let Them In, which I was a random, another random find on Amazon. And then one called Open 24 Hours, which a lot of people on the Horror Movie Podcast blog were claiming is the second coming of Jesus as far as horror films. And one, uh, a Hulu original called Run with the chick from American Horror Story. Whatever her name is, I can't remember it off the top of my head. And then we have a uh, one from a few years ago for Christmas. Somehow I've never seen rare exports. This was actually a recommendation from fellow YouTuber Nightmare Maven. If you haven't checked out her show, her show is excellent. I am a proud Patreon of her. But um, I'll be reading all those. So uh, get to look forward to that. So until then. <laughs>